you know what? What I really want, and I, I mean, I don't know if I'll ever see it in my lifetime, but I hope, I hope I do, um, is a society where everyone can contribute to the best of their ability, whoever they are, whatever their background, where your background should not determine your future. And I think in a weird way, all this mad stuff that's going on right now is maybe part of the process to get to that place. I'm June Sarpong. Uh, I am a television presenter, uh, have been for 20 years now, um, and I've just released a book uh, called Diversify. So I was um, born and raised in East London. Um, I grew up in a very working class community. My parents were immigrants from Ghana. My parents were really hardworking. So we were uh, part of the Ghanaian elite um, and then the coup happened. And so we had to flee um, and ended up in the UK in a council estate with nothing. Um, and so for them, it was a real adjustment period because that's not how they had envisaged their lives. Um, and that's certainly not what they wanted for us. Um, and at the time when uh, we, were, we first came back, which was in the early 80s, it was very hard for uh, immigrants and minorities to get um, middle-class jobs. So my father was highly educated, but still he wasn't able to get um, the kind of work that was equal to his education. Um, my mother was a nurse and, you know, nurses were something that they were, you know, this country needed. So she was able to find nursing work, but he wasn't. So he, um, when they divorced, he ended up moving to America. But so seeing the frustration of that um, definitely uh, made my siblings and I sort of have a real strong work ethic. And also to be appreciative of our opportunities because those opportunities were not available to our parents. The moment I first saw myself on television was when I started the MTV dance floor chart. And I remember all my friends like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you're on telly. Um, and calling me and, and watching it. And I was really loud. I remember being really shouting all the time. Um, so it took a while to sort of find my pace and get you comfortable just being myself on TV. So the early stuff, yeah, I'm really loud. I'm giving myself a headache. <laughs> um, I totally wish when I was starting out that there were more diverse faces. It's terrible. There's only ever been, it seems, room for one at a time. As a woman, I definitely felt I've had to work twice as hard. Um, as a woman of colour, as a woman from working class background, all of those elements, I think, um, have definitely uh, uh, sometimes hindered my career, but then they've also helped in that it's been a point of difference as well. Um, but definitely, I think the income gap is clear, um, opportunity gap is clear. Um, but I do think that what it does is it means that you sort of have to pivot and you have to sort of learn to do different things. So actually I see it sometimes as a plus because it means that you develop different skills and different talents because you don't have the same clear path um, as a elite white male. Being an author, no, it's not something I've always wanted to do at all. A few years ago when I was filming in America, uh, there was a young man on set who I immediately felt uncomfortable around. He was in, had tattoos and I was intimidated by him and I was scared of him. And it's so funny, in that moment, I realized what other rising is. And you know, as a woman of color, I've always looked at this issue from the perspective of being on the receiving end, as opposed to being the person doing it. Um, and so when that happened, it really knocked me for six because I didn't think I had any isms or any unconscious bias. Um, and so I had a conversation with him and he'd had a tough start in life, but luckily our sound man had taken him on as an apprentice. And so this young kid was so excited about the prospect of a future in television. 
I couldn't help but think how difficult it was going to be for him because even somebody like me prejudged him. And that's what made me want to start the conversation. So the book is called Diversify, uh, Six Degrees of Integration. And it really is uh, the case for uh, the social, moral, and economic benefits of diversity. What I hope the book does is it ignites conversations between people um, to help people from uh, disconnected communities find common ground. Um, and also to encourage people to, 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 to actually look inside and challenge their isms um, and enables the reader to feel comfortable with difference and also not just comfortable, understand the value. Because for me, I just think it's insane that we are throwing away so much talent in our society. It, it's insane. You know, these, these kids from these poor backgrounds that we are just thrown by the wayside may have the cure for cancer. They may have the cure for climate change. Who knows? We've never tried. Um, and so I hope uh, it will um, ignite a conversation. First thing I want to say about rejection is, and I, I'd say this to anybody who's ever been told no, and that's most people, is not to take it personally, because it's usually not about you per se, it's about a system. It's about a system that's unfair um, and a system uh, that is out of balance. And I think if you're able to detract from it and distance yourself from actually assuming that rejection is about you, then it doesn't hurt in the same way. And I think it gives you the fuel to want to change things. Um, so in terms of my own personal experience, I mean, one example is um, years ago, when I first started at MTV, um, at the time I had one of the highest rated uh, shows on the network. And uh, there was a feature that uh, MTV ran with all of the MTV women. And it was for a magazine called Sky Magazine. It's, it doesn't exist anymore, but at the time, Sky Magazine was one of the biggest magazines in Britain. It was a cover story. And the tagline was mm, TV, uh, reasons to watch MTV. And I wasn't included. And so what happened was lots of viewers, because it was such a big magazine at the time, lots of viewers started calling up the network to find out if I'd left. And they were like, no. And so then it turned out that it wasn't even Sky Magazine that had um, omitted me from the shoot. MTV, the PR team at MTV thought I wasn't appropriate for a beauty shoot. And so that was uh, an example. And then throughout my career, lots of times where we've agreed a magazine cover uh, and then last minute I've been dropped and the sort of unspoken word is that women of colour don't sell magazines. Um, so I've had that throughout. So yeah, this stuff still exists, it's still there. And one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about politics and so passionate about making sure that other people are is because this is one of the very few things that affects us all. So I know nothing about race car driving, nothing, I haven't got a clue doesn't matter. Whatever Lewis Hamilton or whoever does does not impact my life. But what Theresa May does certainly impacts my life. So that's why for me I'm so passionate about these issues. And I think what Brexit showed a lot of young people in particular is that if you don't participate, you know, your choices can be taken away. Even in the early days, and I still get it now where there's a lot of snobbery and oh, you're a TV presenter, what would you know? Um, I don't care because actually I think that's the problem with our politics at the moment is that we're, we only hear from a very tiny sector of society and to be honest they haven't done a great job. So I think we all need to be vocal um, and regardless of the sort of detractors or the trolls or whatever, still we all have to speak out. Immigration is a good thing. Immigration allows for a different perspective, it allows for a different skill set, um, it allows for uh, cohesion in difference. Um, and I think we need, those of us that know this, need to be braver in putting that argument across because the immigration argument is always from the perspective of it's a bad thing. 
So it's always from the perspective of having to defend it. Um, and actually rather, to me, the discussion should be on how we celebrate it. And if we deal with the issues in the communities who feel most under threat from in by immigration, we wouldn't have the same problems because really for these communities that are against immigration, it's not necessarily immigration that they're against. It's globalization. It's the fact that they've lost their jobs. It's the fact that they've lost their incomes and their place in society and our economy and are looking for somebody to blame. And I think if we fix those issues, we won't have the same problems with immigration. Because you know what, when my parents came to this country as immigrants, yes, in the beginning, it was like, oh, we don't want them here. But soon, we integrated. And I think, I think personally, um, it's a wonderful thing. So what, America wouldn't exist without it. I mean, hello. The reason, they, reason America is the superpower that it is, is because of immigration. I'd say it's taken a long time to get fully comfortable in my own skin and I'm still working on it. I'm not totally comfortable in my own skin. Um, I'm better now. I, I turned 40 this year and I think definitely I um, have uh, uh, more confidence now uh, as a 40-year-old woman than I did as a 20-year-old woman. Um, but I think it's a, it's a process. And actually, do we really ever want to be truly, fully comfortable in our own skin? I think that insecurity makes you a nicer person, to be honest. <laughs> I think uh, London is the best city in the world. I feel so lucky to have been raised in a city like this, where as a black woman uh, from a working class background, uh, there could still be a place for me in the way that in sort of poorer parts of America, perhaps not. So I think everything that I've done up until this point um, has been preparation for this work. Um, and so really what I want the next phase of my career to be is about bringing people together. <laughs>